So uh, today we're doing our very first video uh, in celebration of an icon being finished. Uh, that icon is one of St. Nicholas, which is kind of exciting because this week we celebrated his feast day. And so it's a chance for us to talk a little bit about St. Nicholas, as well as about the icon that has been uh, created of him. sort of the life of St. Nicholas, I guess? It's probably good to contextualize him historically, right? He's, he's um, a man who lived in the third century uh, and as such um, was actually part of the Nicene Council uh, against Arius uh, and, and the heresy that Christ was uh, the first created and, and, and really great, uh, but, but still a, a created creature rather than God. Was he the one who punched Darius in the face? He, he slapped him, <laughs> yes. So at the council there was the moment where um, he was deeply frustrated. It's interesting to think that someone like, like uh, St. Nicholas, uh, when he was bishop, was thrown in prison for years underneath the, uh, when the Roman persecutions happened. So he would have lived a rather miserable life um, because he refused to not say that Jesus was God. And, and so I can imagine that, you know, years later to be at this council and have uh, uh, people at the council uh, refuting that and talking about how, well, no, 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 Christ is really great, but he's not God, that uh, would have been very frustrating for someone who had suffered so much. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, yeah, no, he, he um, yes, which, which wasn't allowed, by the way. And it could have gone much worse, but he was sort of thrown in prison but at that point. But yeah, yeah, so I mean, there's a lot of really interesting stories about St. Nicholas. Um, a lot of people, I don't even know if they understand the, um, the connection to Santa, Santa Claus and St. Nicholas um, in a lot of weird and wonderful ways. Um, our, our idea of Santa Claus, the <clears throat> jolly old elf, um, it has its roots in, in St. Nicholas. And part of that is the gift giving, which uh, has to do with the idea of these bags of gold that uh, when he was distributing his, his, um, his household, um, as he was becoming a priest, he, he came from a fairly well-to-do family and he was getting rid of his worldly possessions in preparation for the priesthood. Uh, one of the things that he, he did was actually help out a, a, a family that had once been very wealthy and had uh, fallen on hard times and was at the point where the, the father was looking at selling his daughters into servitude in order that they could at least eat uh, and not starve. And so the story is, of course, that uh, night after night he uh, tossed these bags of gold into the, uh, into the courtyard. Later there came to be stories about it, one of them falling into the laundry, the, the stocking. So gotcha. there's a lot of fun stories around this about how, why, why stockings go out at night, whatever else. But, oh yeah, because the Dutch use the shoes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this is where, I mean, as, as I think so often should happen, um, the, the saints and the faith itself actually, you know, draws uh, new inspiration and, and I think joy. Uh, as it as it involves different cultures and, and sort of resonates within them. So for the Dutch, you know, the wooden shoe going out, uh, including some uh, straw or, or carrot for, for, the, the, for, his, steed, for yes. his horse, yeah, you know, becomes very important. Um, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, it's really, it's important to look at the saint in a historic context, but um, just like we've talked about how the, the work of the Holy Spirit, translation is a, is a working of the Holy Spirit and such. Right. Same with the life. I, I know that, um, I believe that if we only look at things uh, historically, if we only, if we limit ourselves to that and say, well, what actually happened historically? Um, sometimes we can actually miss uh, a really beautiful truth. Yeah, kind of limiting yourself. Yeah, 
Yeah, and especially with St. Nicholas, who, um, you know, is the Bishop of Myra uh, in his lifetime and, and does these wonderful things for the poor, uh, for the children, for his town, uh, and, is, and is very much beloved. Uh, but but then the story of St. Nicholas, because he's somebody who has a number of miracles that happen on the sea and, and in the oceans, um, he becomes patron of ship um, sailors. and and Didn't even and, know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, he's very, very famous in a lot of his um, miracles, of saving, saving sailors in rough sh seas and this kind of stuff. And, wow. Um, so you can imagine that, you know, with that um, transportation method, his, his, um, the love of St. Nicholas spreads all over the all over the world and um, I mean to this day he's patron of Russia he's patron of, of many many cities um, and in, in, in a very strange way I mean uh, you know come December 29th many children will be waiting for Santa Claus to come and although it's maybe not the best reflection maybe not <laughs> you know it uh, it still is something which at least has some kind of um, a bit of uh, a nugget of truth in itself. So, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, Saint Nicholas is, a, is an important historic figure, and and one of the great saints. Yeah. So, do you want to uh, sort of continue to like the image? Is there more you want to say on the life? Is well, I mean, St. Nicholas is, is uh, of course, you know, when, when we um, make an icon, we're, we're very much trying to uh, create, uh, you know, they talk about icons being a window to heaven, and that's helpful sometimes. Um, but, you know, as, as, as the iconographer, I think a lot of times you're trying to make things as clear as you can and as, as um, visible as you can. In creating that icon, so creating the image of of uh, Saint Nicholas becomes what well, was a really interesting challenge with so much history. Of course, and, you've got big, big, uh, big shoes to fill, I guess. Well, and and so many different ways of sort of seeing and interacting and, and that with him, um, including maybe just a little bit of the the, the modern take uh, as well. So yeah, it was certainly a challenge. Um, the earliest icons, uh, you know, icons uh, work from prototypes. So you, yeah. you you're creating from uh, a canon of of images, um, not not a strict paint by number by any stretch, but but something which has to be um, aware of all the different examples and, and significant contributions that have been made by by past iconographers. Right. So. Yeah, so uh, it was interesting to find that the, the earliest icon I could find was one that actually had him as a much younger man than we would usually consider uh, yeah. him being. So uh, kind of gray-haired, not, not white. Um, but that quickly becomes more standardized with iconographers like Pencilinus, where he becomes a, a very, uh, very old man. Um, iconographically, it's always a challenge to say how are you actually depicting someone who did live to an old age but is now glorified in heaven of and course. so has now this you know life in Christ and what does that look like so it's always a challenge to sort of say how do you paint a, an old man who was old on earth but is now ever you know ever young right. and, and alive in Christ for sure yeah and you talk about like icons always being like recognizable because I remember you talking about St. Andrew, you always know who he is because his hair is messed up a little bit because he was always, I guess, doing other things, not really. Well, no, he was he was uh, initially a disciple of John the Baptist. Gotcha. So it's actually a connection right. to John the Baptist, of course, always has this um, <laughs> yeah. um, yes, wild hair as someone who lived in the desert. And so uh, Andrew, St. Andrew, has that same sort of disheveled uh, gotcha. look, uh, less so, but, but has a little bit of that uh, in, in connection yeah. to his original discipleship to John the Baptist. Yeah, I guess where I was going is it's also like recognizable, like mm -hmm. it's got to be recognizably St. Nicholas, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, and so that's always, that's the trick um, in, in these kind of things, when you have so many variations across so many different cultures, 
um, you can still recognize St. Nicholas uh, most, you know, fairly easily throughout. And so part of it, of course, is how he's dressed. <clears throat> and so, you know, here we have the, the, the newly uh, painted icon of St. Nicholas. <clears throat> and uh, he is slightly balding, which is a common depiction. Right. Uh, and, and sometimes more so, sometimes less so. Um, in that Penicillinus drawing, you actually just have like a tiny little tuff up here. Yeah, I remember. Um, in, in, but in other cases, he's just sort of has the receding hairline. So uh, in this case, it's it's more the receding hairline. Uh, he's wearing, of course, the, the bishop's garments and, 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 and everything else, which is, is very typical. Uh, one of the things that I looked at uh, when, when preparing the drawing for this icon was that I, I, I really wanted him to actually hold one of the um, golden balls or uh, right. one of the many symbols. He has so many symbols. Yeah. Uh, as a saint, that it, w with the different interactions he has with people, um, either in his life or, or uh, through miracles afterwards, I, I really thought, wouldn't it be nice to reference some of those? But it was funny, in, in the research I did, I couldn't find a single traditional example where that had been done. Um, time and oh. again, with, without exception within the tradition, uh, Nicholas is shown holding the gospel and offering um, blessing. Right. Right, as 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 uh, a priest and bishop, so th there really wasn't that room to uh, to improvise on on that. Right, um, not quite the same. I remember with Noah actually, mm. you had you got to have a little bit of fun with that. I guess maybe that's the wrong word, but no, well, but you, yeah, absolutely, Noah being such a, a much more rare um, uh, depiction. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of room. I mean, every every icon was different in actually how they presented him, <clears throat> in the color of his clothes, uh, in the in the symbols being used, and so there was a lot of um, room there to to depict him. Right. But um, I mean, this was true also with the icons of of Christ the Pantocrator as well as uh, Mary uh, the Guide in this case. Um, these these are images that go back actually pre iconoclasm. And really? yeah, well, the originals uh, for Christ and that go back there. There are icons on, on Mount Sinai, where they they go beyond the the, um, the the all the icons being smashed and and that in the east. So uh, you know, generation after generation, you have these uh, this tightening and this this really beautiful deep depiction being created, and so these these are extremely. Um, uh, they have to be very aware of the tradition. In order to oh, yeah, to do sure. that, so uh, and that came up in a number of ways with these, but but here too with Saint Nicholas, you you do have a, 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 a he's uh, very prominent. He's very prominent, and and there are ways that he has to be depicted so that uh, people can recognize him. I love his beard. That's I, I don't know if there's any like anything to that, but I, I just love his beard. Well, <laughs> but that's that's I think very much indicative of the style the studio is is uh, continuing to develop um you know th there are russian styles that are, are so beautiful these like uh, one continuous line where the beards uh, just are circle upon circle upon circle and um just masterfully painted and of course this isn't um going that that far with it but the the strength of line yeah for sure is, is an important part of the style and so certainly when you're dealing with um uh, beards, hair in general, uh, yeah, you have I've that opportunity. That actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. I, I, I love the way you draw hair and your eyebrows too. I love them. Yeah, well, I, I think it's, um, yeah, uh, you know, the, the style is, is a uh, simplification. Hopefully not a dumbing down, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, simplification being a, a fairly uh, a, a complexity resolved. And, uh, and as such, I mean, you can see it a lot in the robes, um, you know, where, where the, um, the, the shape is very strong and there's very strong geometry underneath, uh, holding up the, the whole figure actually. And, and here too, I, I think line, the repetition of line is, because um, when you're looking at this specifically, you can see like line upon line upon mm -hmm. line repeats. Um, I, I think that creates a, a beautiful impression. Yeah. And uh, yeah, a certain stillness in the icon, that's important. I like that word stillness. That's uh, very, 
it, it makes a lot of sense in that context for sure. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, I was showing a couple friends sort of the things you draw, and I came across a picture of Saint John the Evangelist. Okay. Like the first one you drew in your style, and just thinking, wow, it's changed a lot. And there's yeah, like there are more like fundamental changes, but. The thing I noticed most is like there's so much more. They, they exude confidence a little bit more in that they're like stillness, I guess. They're they're less. Um, you 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 definitely have it. Um, it's there, right? Your your style is has developed a lot. I think it's really cool to watch. Yeah. Well, thanks. I mean, I I yeah. Uh, I think part of what you're seeing there is also a, a stronger understanding of the geometry uh, that underpins the icon. Right. At earlier works, um, it's funny how so many of the details are actually, I think, um, beautiful. Oh, and, and, absolutely. And, and, and you know that that simplification being uh, uh, successful, uh, but but at the same time, um, they they don't have as strong of a structure. So there's a bit more of a right. general sense of this is where things are. Uh, see that this is generally balanced. For sure. Um, so I guess that's that's what it is. Is the geometry lends it a bit more presence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They, they, they seem more present. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> well, I mean that's ultimately the goal. So yeah. that's that's really good to hear too. I, I, one of the things I love about iconography is that you get to interact with um, so many like a millennia or, or more of of um, you know these brilliant master saintly iconographers. Um, <laughs> of which I'm none, but it's uh, it's at the same time you, you get to sort of build and converse and see and um, and be inspired by that, uh, as well as it really is a blessing to um, sit with the saints, you know, by by reading. I mean, in preparing for the icon of Saint Nicholas, I I read the early accounts uh, offered by uh, Michael the Archimandrite. It's an 8th century text. It's the earliest example of St. Nicholas's life um, codified. Wow. And so, you know, it's just so interesting to hear um, 1,200 years ago, what were the important details oh, in, in the story, right? Yeah. And, and that's so much fun. Um, but also just to hear the stories again in a slightly different way. Um, and, and then also reading some modern historic accounts and whatever else. Um, but, but, you know, um, learning and, and then praying specifically, um, you know, to St. Nicholas to, to actually um, ask for his aid in the work. Um, all these things are just such a wonderful part of the, of, of the job, of, of the work of being, um, yeah. of painting an icon. So it's been, yeah, it's pretty wonderful. The, the other thing with this icon that I think turned out um, really well is the gilding. That um, is true. I love the gilding on this one. Yeah, yeah. And gilding is such an unforgiving process. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, you picking me up from from work and me asking how the bowl had gone, and you said it's the best. I, it's probably the best I've ever done, and then I go, oh, that's amazing. And then you said, oh, but now the pressure's on for laying the gold, right? Because that's also really unforgiving. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it, it's uh, it was nice to have it all come together in the end. It would have been sad, let's say, <laughs> yeah. to have the bowl turn out so well. Um, and then have the, the gold not go on well. But in the end, I mean, it really did turn out lovely. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Father Nathaniel, um, I mean, the one who I learned really to appreciate gold with, because before that I, I didn't have much appreciation for it. Of course. Um, he was always so, it was so important to him to have the right amount of liveliness in the gold, right? Something that was purely reflective, purely, like, perfectly um, mirror. Gilled mirror. Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen that in some icons, and I think the effect is truly inhuman, or, or uh, it, you know, that perfection. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it's not as human. No, and it doesn't look, uh, it, it's funny how when something becomes totally, absolutely perfect, it almost becomes, it, 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 it becomes dead. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, and I think you see that historically when when things, it, philosophies, when they get nailed down to be perfectly summarized, history moves on. Okay, we've got that figured out. We move on. There's, of course, th yeah. there's a certain liveliness, and that's what Father Nathaniel really tried to uh, 
teach me, I think, in, in, in laying the gold leaf. And so you oscillate from it being too imperfect that it becomes distracting to being too perfect that it's actually distracting. Right. Um, so to actually have the, this, this is actually a nice balance. You can, if, if you look, you can see the individual leaves. And, and certainly the light moves, you can see that it, it, it kind of affects different areas slightly differently. So yeah. and that I was a joy. You're... Yeah, and I know you're really fond of the way from Dead On, it kind of, especially candlelight, you'll say it kind of like glows a little bit, looks like uh, dead gold, I think is the term for it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you Yeah, mean? unburnished, yeah, unburnished, dead gold. Dead gold. Yeah. And then from the side, it's got, you, you can actually see just reflections if you look at it from like a very specific angle, and it's just, yeah. It, it adds, you were talking about as you move around it, it adds some interest in there as well, some movement, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's important. I mean, for the original icon, it's like any art. Um, I remember seeing Tom, Thoms Tom Thompson's uh, work for real uh, once upon a time, and before that, really only ever having seen images in, in, in a, a magazine, right? right? And I really thought, oh, I don't really see what the big deal is, and I don't really like his work that much, which of course is you know, um, <laughs> sacrilege. sacrilege in Canada. <laughs> so, but, but having seen, then, then seeing his actual work, um, being so blown away by it. And the same is true. I, I you know, as much as the, you know, we try in the studio to make things, uh, available in, in print so that others can have it and be blessed by it. There is, I mean, the actual, the original work is special in a lot of ways. And part of that is how it interacts with the environment. A, a print, tends to sort of be a, a, an image in it's one stationary, it's stationary. Yeah. In, in, in kind of in time and place like it's sort of this is this is the image that it was in this time and place yeah. where where the the original icons um both in i think their color depth and in their gold and um even in their depth um yeah you know, having i have the, noticed that actually mm -hmm. it's been funny because while i have access to your prints they're just so much harder to uh, feel any sort of connection with or to pray with. Mm. Um, and not that I don't think they can, I'm just used to stuff like this, so I'm very lucky. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, no, it's, it's nice to have these to pray with. Have you talked about the Conestoga Brown before, Around the Edges? No, because so I think that's a really cool story. Well, it, yeah. So I mean, it's it's interesting that the um, I mean, all the pigments. I mean, you you know, you helped collect some of these, um, and certainly in this case, uh, needing some of the colors that I don't always need, um, some of the more greens and that mm. meant going a bit further afield to uh, for, for the pigment sources. But yeah, they, uh, this time maybe we'll just talk about the uh, the outer one. And so the the icons in the studio um, are typically finished with the Conestogo Brown pigment that was created here until about the 1890s and it's it's a really it's, it's a unique color that's um something of a i mean it's sort of a burnt sienna ish color yeah. um, but it's, it's a really beautiful um, <clears throat> color that's unique to the area and it was made into pigments through uh the goods and sills company i believe uh for 10 20 years it went all over the Commonwealth uh, and even won awards in England. I, I've been, I, I've, I've researched it a bit and, and found out about these things. But it's it's a nice way of sort of framing it. The the, the outside um, uh, of the icon is uh, is is partly that connection to the earthly, and so okay. it's usually done in some kind of earth tone, and that can be that can be a red um, because of course you have red ochres and whatever else. Um, it can go very dark in, in some cases. Um, this is a nice balance, I think. I, I really like having that. And so it's actually, it's funny, it's the, it's the last color that's added to the icon to be finished. Mm -hmm. The icon itself is finished once it's named. That's sort of the traditional stage in which you name the icon and now it, it, it is right. an icon of St. Nicholas. Um, but after that, you, you sort of paint your edge and, and it sort of finish things up that way. And so you're, you're painting your frame, yeah. in a sense. And it, it's kind of nice to use the um, that that pigment from here to sort of frame the the icon and all the icons that are finished here. And one that's kind of definitive of this place specifically, right? Yeah. I, I really like that idea of like sort of contextualizing it because so much of what you do is about a sense of place. Yeah. And yeah. 
Well, all of the things you've found from Conestoga are amazing and I love the colors so much. This is just such a distinctive, it, it was uh, actual, it, it's Conestoga's color, right? Yeah, it's, it is. It's important it is. in that sense. Yeah. So I really like that idea of grounding it in the place. Yeah. So. Yeah, me too. Me too. Glory to God.